Hey guys, it's Simon. Welcome back to the RPG Kotlin LibGDX tutorial. So the last part was a little bit longer where we introduced the entity component system and the render system, which I promise you is one of the most complex parts of that area. But unfortunately, at least for in my opinion, it's the yeah the beginning part because I always like to have already visible something on the screen. So that's why I wanted to start with the render system. And yeah, so last time we developed that, that we could create now three entities, which simply create uh, the texture or simply render the player texture completely. And we also rotated one of these actors that we also uh, saw this difference. And now we are really going to render just the player itself and also the, the slime. And that will be hopefully, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, a shorter part and a little bit easier. And we just elaborate and enhance the things that we developed in the last part. So first of all, let's bring in the other graphic, which um, we downloaded the last time. So this Mystic Woods stuff. And now we bring in the slime from the characters. So again, I copy that into the raw folder first because we will definitely modify that and change it a little bit in an upcoming part. But for the time being, whoops, let's just also paste it into the, the assets folder so that we have now a slime available. Then let's simply load that as well. So this one we call now player texture. And the other one we call slime texture. And the path is to our slime. And now we don't want to render the complete texture. We want to render a region. And what is the difference there? So as we have seen before, let me, oh wait, before we forget it, let me also dispose the slime texture. Never forget that. Okay, but coming back. So currently we are rendering. Okay, that, let me also remove <laughs> the other entities. But currently we are rendering a complete texture, which is everything, which is the, the different animations, let's say, of our player, which is everything in here. So this is our entire texture. But now we want to render just a specific region and the region would be, for example, that specific frame here of the texture or that specific frame down there or this attack animation. So a region within that texture is a so-called texture region. And later on in a future part, we will use that to create then animations because as you see it here, for example, from here to here, this is the idle animation of the player or from that frame to that frame. That is the run animation of the player. So there we're simply going to render the different texture regions uh, over time and simply, let's say, move through the different frame in a loop version, for example, to always repeat this, this run version of the player. And for you, just the important part is the difference between a texture and a texture region. And maybe you also hear that from time to time an atlas and an atlas region and uh, an atlas is simply a combination of different textures so for example the player plus the slime if that would be combined together into one texture then that would be uh, would be an atlas and a region inside of such an atlas is they called an, an atlas region so why would you ever create such an, an atlas or atlas? How to pronounce it in English? I don't know. The reason is, as always, performance. Because what is happening in the background uh, in OpenGL when we are doing a render call? So let's dig into the details. So when we go into draw, then there is the root draw function. Then there is the draw children function. And then it goes through the different actors and then it simply draws something uh, which for a basic actor as you see is nothing so nothing will be drawn because it does not know anything how it should draw itself but when we go to an image
of scene2d and we go here to our draw method then we will see that this is again delegated to a so-called drawable instance in scene2d which also does not bring me where I want to go how is that called? I forgot it. Is it a let me let me check. Is it a texture drawable maybe? Texture region drawable. Okay, perfect. So in the end, <laughs> as you see also as an example, so scene to d in the background is also not that easy, so it's a lot of stuff for for the things that we are using right now. Um but in the end we go down to the sprite patch again, or patch in this case, and then it makes a draw call, and then here, for example, of a specific texture region of a, with a specific uh, position and size. And what OpenGL is now doing here in the background, it first of all, it always needs to bind the texture. So, for example, if we want to render our player, then it needs to bind the, the player texture, before it can do rendering stuff. And this texture binding is a quite expensive operation. So that's why you want to reduce it to a minimum. And that is why Atlas things got introduced because when you then combine a lot of textures into one big texture, then OpenGL just needs one binding of that big texture and then you can render everything from it. So for example, you could render the player, the slime, the chest, whatever is then part of that big, big texture. And that is way better than having a lot of small textures and then always binding them again and again. So that's why that should be removed. And yes, yeah, so, so this is the important part here to remember a texture, a texture region, and then Atlas. So what is the purpose of those? That is the important part. And so far we just um, rendered the texture here directly. And now we want to render a specific region. And that is quite simple. So we simply add here the texture region around our texture and then say uh, where in the texture we are. So the position and the size for the time being, I know the player texture, I think is 48 by 48 uh, pixels. So we are at position zero, zero, and we are simply rendering the, the first animation. So that one now should already just show us one player entity or player graphic. Yeah, exactly. So this is the, the first frame of the texture. So this is the region that we are now rendering and that's already it. And now let's do the same for our slime. So here we use the slime texture. This one, if I remember correctly, has 32 by 32. Um, let's move it to a different position. So for example, I don't know, 12. And let's also, can I flip it? Is there a flip function? Does not look like it's okay. So then it will simply look to the right. Let's let's see. Okay. So here we have our player. Here we have our slime. Currently we cannot make it look to the left that easily because it looks like the image actor does not support. Uh, yeah, I call it flipping. So that simply the, the texture gets flipped and he would now look to the left. So that one we will introduce later on. Um, but yeah, for the time being, the important part is that you see how to render just a region of our texture. And as mentioned, so at the moment that would be two texture bindings. So we have one for the player texture and one for the slime texture before they get rendered. And uh, to optimize that, we introduce a so-called texture atlas. And let's also do that in that part because I think that's not that complex to understand. So the way I create them is with the GDX texture backer UI, I think it's called. 
Exactly. So there I go to releases and then just download the the latest release, uh, which I already did. So I just open it then up. It's actually an installer. So now let me open up the, the real application. So this is how it looks. So what we have. So first of all, we want to create a so-called pack. So this is like the, the Atlas. Let's call that, uh, I don't know, game objects. Okay, so that will create a game objects Atlas. Where do we want to store that? So this will be in our game. We want to store it in our assets, in our graphics folder. That's it. Then we need to define what kind of files do we want to pack together. So here again, we are in our game folder. Now we go to assets raw and yeah, just pick that for the time being. So the player and the slime. And now we could specify some settings. So for example, what would be the file output format? What is the maximum size of the texture that gets combined? So there I would keep it with the default settings. I think those are good enough. And I also I always would suggest to try to keep a power of two dimension if possible, because at least in the past that was faster to load and to process by our computers. Not sure how it is nowadays, but in the past it was for sure like that. Um, Padding, yeah, we don't need that for the time being. Let's let's move that to zero. Then no edge padding, and I think that's it. So then, when we would pack that now, so now we have created a so-called texture atlas, and there, as you see, it's simply one bigger texture which contains now a player texture and also a slime texture. So those are the two things that got created. Then let's save this because we will later on uh, use that more often, this texture packer application. So I also always stored it in the raw folder. Texture packer project. Okay. So coming back now to our game in the assets folder, we will see that we now have an atlas and a PNG. So the PNG is the the texture itself, the combined one, and the atlas contains the information. So for example, where would we find the player texture? Where would we find the slime texture? So the location, the size, things like that. Is it rotated? And yeah, all of that stuff. And now instead of using those two things, we want to use the atlas. So first of all, let's get rid of those graphics here. Let's go back to our game screen where we now, instead of um, loading the textures here, we will load a so-called texture atlas. Okay, that should be it. So let's remove our textures. Then an atlas, as you might have guessed, needs to be disposed, of course, as well. Good, so we have this post that um, I forgot the S here at the top because it's game object, not game object. And yeah, now we simply want to replace here our player texture. We need to get it now from our Atlas. So there is a function which is called find region. Uh, what is the key? So that one we can find out easily here. So in this UI, you see that region here has the uh, key player at the bottom. And that one here has slime at the bottom. So this is how we can uh, find those regions. So here it's the player, which gives us already back a region. Here it's called an Atlas region, but it's yeah very similar to the texture region. And now there's a different constructor where we need to pass in the region. Ah, okay, then also the position. So here it would be zero, zero because yeah, we, we get here the region back and we start at zero, zero and then go to 48, 48 and the same here for our slime. So there we have now here our slime and also with zero, zero, we start at the bottom left, I think. And that should be it. So let's see. 
okay yeah it's working the same as before but now an optimized rendering so now instead of having two texture bindings per render call we now only have one because now we bind the big texture at atlas texture and then we just render the player and the slime out of it so this is a, a render optimization that we now did and yeah so this again is important for the yeah one of the upcoming parts where we are then going to develop an animation so that we don't have the static images and instead our objects will play an animation and for that one we will use a texture atlas and yeah out of this big texture we get then out the different frames of our animation to make the rendering as best as possible good so this should hopefully be a little bit of a shorter part and easier to digest i hope in contrast to the last parts and in the next part we are again going to implement something more cool which are then animations so a generic solution to play animations for our entities. Thank you and see you in the next part. Bye bye.